Good afternoon, church family. It's good to see you today. Happy Monday. We've got a good start to the week going on for us here, and we've got a lot going on at church this week. We thank God for what He's doing and, and just the different, um, the different activities we can be involved in and uh, the fellowship we can enjoy one with another, but we're certainly glad that we can meet here in the midday and ask God's blessing and seek the Lord for revival and study the Word of God for just a few moments. But let's pray together and ask the Lord's blessing, shall we? Father, we thank you for the Word of God, and Lord, it's our prayer today that you'd honor and help us, Lord, as we meet together. Uh, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts, God, that you'd encourage us and challenge us, and that you would help us, Lord, to live and do the things we know we must, uh, to, li to, to live a life that honors you. Lord, not, Lord, help us not to serve you in order to, but because of, because of your love for us, Lord, may we live wholeheartedly for thee. Yeah, but Lord, we do pray for revival in our lives this day. Lord, that you'd challenge and help us, Lord, uh, to look to thee. And uh, Lord, be obedient to the things of God. Yeah, and Lord, we pray that you'd bless this time of devotion. Use it uh, to encourage our hearts, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our weekday family devotions. We're glad you're here. Let's take our Bibles and look at what the Word of God says in Genesis chapter 48. Of course, uh, Jacob is about to die. He's, he's, uh, Joseph has found out that his father is sick. And so he brings his sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, and sets them before, uh, before Jacob. And he blesses them. Of course, uh, he, he blesses Ephraim first and Manasseh second. And he was not happy about that. He tried to remove Jacob's hands. But the Bible says that he guided his hands wittingly. Uh, for Manasseh was the firstborn, but truly Ephraim was going to be the, the, greater, the greater tribe of Israel. Nevertheless, uh, as we continue here, of course, in verse number 21, we find a, a, a wonderful statement here. And it talk, talk about peace and hope and assurance. And this is exactly uh, what Israel has in his, in his final moments on this earth. He has the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Christians, how can you and I have the peace of God? Well, we obtain the peace of God by having first made peace with God, according to the book of Philippians. However, as, the, as, as Christians, we are able to have peace uh, because of the truth of God's word. We, we can have peace because of God's promises. Because of the word of God, we find our hope, our confidence, and our assurance in the word of God. The Bible says, And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you. He says, You know what? I'm leaving this place, but I'm not leaving you alone because God is is with you. God will be with you. As a matter of fact, he describes uh, in verse number 15 uh, through the end of this chapter how, how the angel, even in verse 16, he says, The angel, speaking of God, which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. And, and uh, you know, even in verse uh, verses uh, 5, 6, and 7, talks about uh, Luz. And, uh, and or, or verse 3 speaks of Luz, uh, where, where God met, where God met uh, Jacob originally. But he says, but God shall be with you. Would you mark that statement in your, in your Bibles? God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. What was the land of their fathers? They didn't have a land. They were sojourners, but it was the land that God had promised to them. It was the, the land of Canaan where they were sojourning. Uh, one day, God, uh, even in the next book, the book of Exodus, we find that God uh, delivers the nation of Israel after 400 years in Egypt. Uh, he delivers them and uh, from, from bondage, from, from slavery in Egypt, and he gives them this land. Um, but that's the promise of God. Christian, your, your future is as bright as the promises of God. That's, I believe, at what Adoniram Judson said, a missionary in Burma. Uh, he says, And bring you again unto the land of your fathers. He says, Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the land of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Christian, it's going to be okay. The Lord is going to be is with you. He's going to bring you again. 
And as, as we sit here today and contemplate our lives, as we contemplate the work of God, I want to encourage you that, that it's going to be just fine, okay? Because the Lord hath said he will never leave us nor forsake us. He's a very present help in time of trouble. He's with us. He's going to shepherd us through. He'll guide us through. He will deliver. He will prove himself faithful and mighty time and time and time again. And so, Christian, may you and I have confidence in the Lord this day, and may God help us live our lives for him. Father, we thank thee for the day you've given. Lord, we pray today that you'd help us live with great confidence and great assurance in the promises of God and his word. And so, Lord, we do ask that you would strengthen our hearts and help us, Lord, live with great convictions rooted uh, in, the, in the word of God. Lord, that the peace of God would pass all understanding and that you'd help us keep our hearts and minds. And, uh, but, Lord, we do pray for your blessing on this day. And again, Lord, we ask that you would send revival. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Christians, friends, it's good to see you today. We're praying for you. Trust that God's going to give you a blessed rest of this day. And tomorrow we'll see you at noon. But if there's anything the church or I can do to be a blessing or help to you in the meantime, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at info at pickeringtonbaptisttemple.org or you can call us directly at 614-382-0585. May God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.